What does it mean to bear with one another in love? Let's talk about it today on Motivation Monday. This Monday, I'd like to start off with a story that gets us to our point for Motivation Monday. If you're with us last night for our 5 p.m. online worship service, you realize we had a little bit of a technical problem about 10 minutes before 5, I realized that, you know what, our video didn't completely upload. Ed Sermon cut off right in the middle, and nobody wants that. So I deleted the video, reprocessed it, uploaded it. We we're about 30 minutes late. In the, in the meantime, I got some texts. Hey, am, am I doing something wrong? I can't find the lesson. No, no, it's, it's me. You know, I'll, I'll get it to you as soon as possible. Nice emails, nice texts, and, and we got everybody in the right place. And you know what, it all worked out in the end. We just... We're about 30 minutes late to start. But my mind was struck with the idea of everybody was so patient, so encouraging. Bear with one another. That text, at least the text I'm thinking of today, is in Ephesians 4. And so I want to look at it with you, and I think it will be so encouraging to us to consider these thoughts about bearing with one another. As we look at the, the environment that surrounds us, what's going on in the world around us right now. There's a lot of tension. So let's start chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 1. Let's read it together. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So we've got three things we want to unpack from verse 1. So who is the I? The I, of course, is Paul. Paul is writing to the church, Christians at Ephesus. Paul is in prison, imprisoned in Rome around 60 AD. And so when he says, I'm a prisoner for the Lord, literally a prisoner for the Lord. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the therefore. Not all versions have this, but it's a great connecting phrase that we always look for in the Bible. And in the English Standard Version, it's pointing back to chapter 3. And so when you look at chapter 3, Paul was moved to pray a prayer for the Christians, for the church that met there in Ephesus. And then after that prayer, he says this. That's what it's there for. That's what this context is that we're looking at here. And then he says this phrase, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So Christians, walk in a manner worthy. Well, there is a statement you could spend quite some time unpacking. But that sets the perspective for what we're dealing with. In everything we do, the things that we say to one another, the things we say to the folks that we meet out in our community, the things that we say online, we are supposed to walk in a manner that is worthy to being called Christian. You could spend a lot of time absorbing that, and I encourage you to consider that more. But for the sake of time, let's continue reading together from Ephesians 4. With all humility, gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So how do you walk in in a manner that's worthy, with gentleness, with patience, with humility, bearing with one another in love. Those are all things that we've talked about recently at Bridgewood as we examine the fruit of the Spirit. And these, these concepts of gentleness, patience, and humility, they're all things that we can grow in as Christians and learn to extend to one another. And then, of course, uh, the phrase that kind of planted in my mind, bearing with one another in love. We recognize that any relationship, any relationship that we're going to work at is going to require that we bear with one another in love. I am absolutely 100% positive that there are some things that I do where my wife has to bear with me on those things. My children too, as their father. There's things that we all do when we're in these close relationships 
But we have to be patient. We have to be loving and gentle and humble in those relationships. And it strengthens them so well. And what was that next word we read? Eager. Eager. It's my desire. It's what I want to do. Is I want to maintain the unity of the Spirit. You know, in a, in a world that is just torn right now. People are torn this way and that way as they look at COVID-19. People are torn this way and that way as they look at politics. People are torn this way and that way about so many things in our world. But what is the Christian called to do? Walk worthy in gentleness, patience, and humility to bear with one another, eager to maintain that bond, that unity of the Spirit. Continue on verse 4 through 6. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to that one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. We do face some challenging days ahead. But Christian, let me encourage you. Bear with one another. Be eager to show each other patience, humility, and gentleness in our responses to one another, especially as we have disagreements maybe in things of this world. We strive to maintain that spirit of peace, that unity in the spirit that Christians need because we have a goal that we're striving for. Thank you for bearing with me when I cause you grief and trouble and I will do my best to continue bearing with you too because we're going to heaven together let's keep working on that let's look for opportunities to reflect that into our community through our words through our actions through the things that we post online and in everything that we do God bless you. Have a great week. Look out for one another and reflect God's love.